configuring the Alcatel Lucent OS 6900 switch from standalone mode to virtual chassis mode. This video presentation is a quick tutorial on configuring six Alcatel Lucent OS 6900 switches to operate as a single virtual chassis switch. A virtual chassis is a group of switches managed through a single management IP address and that operates as a single bridge and router. It provides both node level redundancy for layer 2 and layer 3 services and protocols acting as a single device. Starting from the release, OS 7.3.3 R01, Alcatel Lucent OS 6900 switches are equipped with the capability of operating six physical switches as one logical switch. In this sample topology, the red colored links represent 40 gigabyte links, the green colored links represent two 10 gigabyte links, and the black colored links represent a single 10 gigabyte link. However, it is recommended not to have both 40 gigabyte link and 10 gigabyte link as a part of the same virtual fabric link. A switch running in standalone mode can be converted to a virtual chassis participant if the following criterions are met. First, a valid advanced license must be installed on each of the chassis. The license applied on all the participant chassis must be the same. Secondly, a valid chassis identifier and a virtual fabric link must be configured. And finally, for the switch to join a virtual chassis topology, the virtual fabric link must have member ports assigned to it and the underlying interface is administratively enabled. To configure the chassis identifier on a chassis, use the following command. Virtual chassis, configured chassis, ID, followed by the chassis identifier number. To create virtual fabric links use the following command. Virtual chassis, VF link, virtual fabric link number, create. To assign a port to a virtual fabric link use the following command. Virtual chassis, VF link, virtual fabric link number, the keyword, member port, followed by the port number. Here is a sample virtual chassis configuration example for chassis 1 and chassis 2. The same configuration can be extended to all the other chassis by changing the chassis identifier and the corresponding port connected between chassis. In addition to the minimum configuration, the user has the capability to set a few optional parameters to customize the operation of virtual chassis. The control VLAN is for exchanging virtual chassis control information. If a VLAN is configured as a control VLAN, then this VLAN can no longer be used for normal data traffic. By default, the control VLAN that is used for exchanging virtual chassis control information is 4094. When the control VLAN is changed from the default value to a new value, the user does not have to change the VPA state of the virtual fabric ports. The change in control VLAN initiates a VPA change state machine automatically. However, after the change, the switch needs to be rebooted for the new value to take effect. It is recommended to have the control VLAN set at the default VLAN. It is necessary for all the participant chassis to have the same control VLAN configured. In case of a control VLAN mismatch condition, the chassis with the mismatch VLAN would not be a part of the virtual chassis. Control VLAN can be configured using the command, virtual chassis configured control VLAN, followed by the VLAN number. Chassis group identifier is used to identify the switch as belonging to a particular virtual chassis group. 
all the participant chassis must have the same virtual chassis group identifier to be a part of virtual chassis. If the chassis group identifier value is not set, then the default chassis group identifier is set to zero. Chassis group identifier value can be set using the command virtual chassis chassis group followed by the group identifier. Hello Interval provides the capability of controlling the ISIS PDU exchange between chassis when configured as a virtual chassis. By default, the Hello Interval value is set to 10. The Hello Interval can be configured using the command virtual chassis Hello Interval followed by the interval value in seconds. The final mandatory step is to perform a write memory and issue the command convert configuration to the virtual chassis directory reload. However, the directory must contain a valid image file and the boot.cfg which holds the virtual chassis configuration. The convert configuration command creates a vc boot.cfg and a vc setup.cfg file on the virtual chassis directory. The VC setup.cfg file contains the virtual chassis information, and the VC boot.cfg file holds the configuration information of the switch. Once the convert configuration command is applied, all the participant chassis reload and come up in virtual chassis mode. At this point, a master is chosen based on one of the following conditions the chassis with the highest priority will be chosen as the master. If the chassis priority is set to default on all chassis, then the chassis with the longest uptime will be chosen as the master. If the uptime also remains the same on all chassis, then the chassis with the smallest chassis identifier will be chosen as the master. In a duplicate chassis identifier condition, the chassis with the lowest MAC address will assume the role of the master. However, this condition is undesirable since all the chassis with a higher MAC address and conflicting chassis identifier will get into a failed state. If a new chassis is joining an existing virtual chassis, then the current master of group continues to be the master. Even though the new chassis has a higher priority or chassis identifier, the existing master chassis remains unchanged. However, if all the participant chassis are reloaded, then the master is elected, as discussed in the previous slide. In our example, we will consider that all chassis have unique chassis identifier. Since we are booting up all the chassis at the same time, the uptime for all the chassis remains the same. Now let us look at some of the command outputs after the configuration and reload of the participant chassis. Once the virtual chassis is completely up and running, you can view modules from all the chassis on the master chassis. Use the command show virtual chassis topology to display all details of all the participant chassis in the virtual chassis topology. The command show virtual chassis consistency can be used to check the configured parameters for all the participant chassis. The virtual fabric link 
information can be viewed from the output of the command show virtual chassis VF link. From this command you can view the number of member ports per virtual fabric link and the speed type of the link. In case of multiple member ports within a VF link, the member port of each VF link can be viewed using the command show virtual chassis VF link member port. The command, show virtual chassis, chassis ID, 1, topology, can be used to view the detailed topology information. The output, also shows the path, to each of the remote chassis, from the local chassis. As an example, let us disable link between chassis 1 and chassis 4. We can see that the chassis 1 now uses the link from chassis 3 to reach chassis 4. On re-enabling the port between chassis 1 and chassis 4, we converge back to the initial state. And finally, the command, show virtual chassis neighbors, can be used to display which neighbor units are connected to which VFL number.